Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation with different bases. We have 2 to the power x plus 2 to the power x equals 3 to the power x. Do you think we can find the solution by guess and check? This is probably going to be difficult. Now, we did a similar problem where the bases were different, but that time, if you remember a few days ago, the base on the right hand side was a 4 and 4 is 2 squared so that made the problem a great deal easier. But this one is a little different because 2 and 3 are not powers of each other. So here's what we're going to do instead. We're going to use the same strategy, combine the 2 to the power x's together and then go for the solution. I'm also going to show you how we can get complex solutions. And at the end, I think we're going to be looking at a graph. All right. so. I'll be sort of pre uh, presenting two solutions. So let's go ahead and start with the first one. So for my first solution, I'm going to write the 2 to the x plus 2 to the x as 2 times 2 to the x equals 3 to the power x. And then since this is 2 to the first power, I can go ahead and add the exponents. Remember the rule, if you add two, if you multiply two powers, you add the exponents. But of course, they have to have the same base. If the bases are different, you can't do it. And if the exponents are the same and the bases could be same or different, then you could basically multiply the bases and use the common exponents. So those are pretty much the standard rules for multiplying exponential expressions in the real world. Okay. Now, what do we do then? We combine these into 2 to the power x plus 1 equals 3 to the power x. Again, at this point, you can try to guess and check, but I don't think you're going to find the answer by guess and check, unless you're very, very good at this. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to bring down the powers by using the natural log. So if we natural log both sides, ln here and ln here, x plus 1 is going to be a coefficient and x is going to be a coefficient. So this is going to look like x plus 1 multiplied by ln 2 or natural log of 2 equals x times natural log of 3. I'm not writing a multiplication symbol. You can, but I think it's understood that these two expressions are multiplied. Now, remember, our goal is to solve for x. So you kind of have two options here. You can isolate the x term, but since we have it on both sides, I don't, I don't think that's going to be possible. So it looks like we have one option, and that will be distributing the x plus 1. If you distribute x plus 1 over ln 2 or vice versa, you're going to get x times ln 2 plus 1 times ln 2 equals x times ln 3. Now we have x's on both sides, and you don't want that because we're going to solve for x. Let's go ahead and put the x's on the same side. By subtraction, we get ln 2 equals x ln 3 minus x ln 2. I could write this on the left hand side, but that's okay. You should be able to solve either way. Now, at this point, what would you do? Since x is a common factor, you should definitely take the x out. And then divide both sides by ln 3 minus ln 2 to get the x by itself. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by ln 3 minus ln 2 ln3 minus ln2. That's too long. Let's go ahead and shorten it. And we should be good to go. And these should be equal. And I think it's an extra one. Okay, here we go. Now, ln3 minus ln2, obviously, is not 0 because 2 and 3 are not equal. Oh, come on, you knew that, right? And then we can basically go ahead and cancel that out. And x becomes this. But let's go ahead and write the x because it kind of keeps bugging me. We should have x on the left unless you're kind of writing right to left. That's a different story, right? Anyways, this will be the x value. So is that the only solution? Well, that seems to be the only real solution. Of course, at the end or towards the end, we're going to go ahead and complexify this expression so we can find complex solutions. OK, so now we have an alternative. Let's go ahead and call that second method. Now we have 2 to the power x plus 2 to the power x equals 3 to the power x. By the way, I have a question for you, which I'm going to pose. And later on, I believe I'm going to make a video about this. And we've done some similar problems before. But my question is, at this point, 
if we had different bases, like all three different bases, like two to the X plus three to the X equals four to the X, could we still solve this problem, right? That would be a good question, don't you think? Or if we had something like two to the X plus three to the X equals the square root of 13 to the power X, or two to the X plus three to the X equals five to the X. Obviously, this would be pretty easy, right? Because two plus three is equal to five. And I believe I've, I made a short on this one. And the second one should also be easy if you really think about it. I made a similar problem a while ago, a long time ago. But the first one is gonna be pretty interesting. Do you think we can solve this problem uh, and find the X values without approximating, without any numerical approaches? I'm not talking about numerical analysis here, okay? Anyways, I just wanted to pause these questions and then continue with the second method. So we have two to the X plus two to the X equals three to the power X. So how do we proceed with that, right? Again, just like before, we're gonna write this uh, as two times two to the X equals three to the X. But this time, instead of combining the exponents or, does that mean combining? No, instead of using the properties of exponents to uh, you know, combine these two things, I'm going to divide both sides by two to the power x because that already separates the term that contains x, which is good. I don't care if it x is an exponent, but this time we're gonna get something super nice, three to the x divided by two to the x. We already talked about the, what is that called? Multiplication property, but didn't talk about division. It's the same thing. If you divide a to the x by b to the x, you just write it as a over b to the x or vice versa. And the same thing goes for multiplication, right? Okay, so those are the properties when the exponents are equal. Okay, so this means three over two to the power x equals two. And now we can go ahead and just natural log both sides. You see, this is different from the first approach because with the first one, we kind of wrote the two to the x times two as two to the power x plus one. We combined the exponents or added the exponents. This time, we didn't. So now we're going to go ahead and ln both sides. Of course, you need ln to bring this x down. And that's going to give us x times ln 3 halves equals ln 2. And by way of division, of course, you're going to get x equals ln 2 divided by ln 3 halves. But wait a minute. Let's go ahead and compare this result to the first method. Did we get the same thing? Because this looks different. What did we get with the first method? We got ln2 over ln3 minus ln2, right? Are they different? No, not really. If you use the quotient property, remember log of a over b can be written as log a minus log b. And this is true for any base, including base 10, including base e. So we can also write this as ln2 over ln3 minus ln2. So our answers agree on the same thing. Make sense? Now let's go ahead and talk about how to complexify this. And then if I have a graph, I can't remember if I made one, uh, I'll show you the graph. Okay? So how do we complexify things? What are the complex solutions? All right, let's take a look. Now we have three over two to the power x. I'm gonna pick it up from here because I don't really wanna do the old work again. So this is going to be equal to two, right? That's where we left off. Now. At this point, if you're trying to find complex solutions, you can basically do two things. One, you're gonna write the two as a complex number. What is two as a complex number? We can write one as a complex number, so let's go ahead and multiply both sides by one, which can be written as, in the complex world, e to the power two pi n i. And of course, n is an integer. And what does that mean? It just means that we have a number whose argument is multiples of two pi, and that would basically represent one on the complex plane because you're basically one unit away from zero and you're on the real axis, so no imaginary parts. And this is a real number whose modulus is one, which is itself, by the way, and the angle it makes is basically zero or two pi or multiples of two pi in general. Make sense? Okay, we can go ahead and use a natural log at this point. You could also write three over two as e to the power ln something and then go from there, but it will be the exact same thing. So let's go ahead and, because on the left-hand side, we're basically talking about a real valued ln. So 
If you ln both sides, of course, we're going to have to deal with the complex logarithm on the right hand side. It's going to look like x ln 3 halves equals ln 2 plus, again, this is the product rule, ln e to the power of something is something, so it's going to be 2 pi and i. And finally, by way of division, ln 2 divided by ln 3 halves. And again, uh, you can write it as ln 3 minus ln 2 if you want, if that's something that you like, plus 2 pi n. I'm also going to divide it by ln 3 minus ln 2, and then finally multiply by i. So that's going to be our complex solutions. There are infinitely many because n is an integer. Okay? So notice that this is nicely organized because we have the A plus BI format, which is the name of another channel that I have. Hopefully, you're watching those videos on complex numbers. Anyways, in this case, let's talk about some specifics like what happens if n is equal to 0. Then you get x equals ln2 over ln3 minus ln2, which is the only real solutions. But if n is equal to 1, you get a complex solution. If n is equal to negative 1, you get another complex solution, so on and so forth. Now, let's see if I made any graphs, and, and yay, I did. Okay, so the graph of 2 to the x plus 2 to the x is the pink one. Is that pink or purple? I think it's pink. And then notice that uh, first it's kind of above the blue line or the curve, but then after a while, it's actually going to grow a little slower. The other one is going to exceed it because it has a higher base. And the solution, the real solution, is right here as you've seen before. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.